بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we have توفيق to get together and start إن شاء الله a series of seven lectures on the concept of hope or raja and I'm very happy that uh, this also uh, coincides the birth anniversary of Imam al-Askari alayhi salam and this is uh, the actual the first actual you know program that we are holding in this uh, office uh, in London so inshallah your presence and the birth of Imam al-Askari inshallah they will give us barakah to continue inshallah uh, some of you remember we used to have yes Okay. okay. Yes. So some of you remember we used to have uh, on Mondays Akhlaq uh, series in Hose in uh, Wilsden, and that was uh, really, you know, the highlight of the week for me. So inshallah, I hope we can gain the same inshallah vibe and even better inshallah bi iznillah. Uh, so our topic is Al-Raja uh, or Hope based on the book Al-Mahajjatul Al-Bayza. Those who uh, attended our previous Akhlaq lecture, you remember that we discussed few topics from Mahajjatul Al-Bayza. For example, As-Sabr wa shukr So these two are together like two uh, you know, sides of the same coin or like two uh, sides of the same scale. We talked about also heart. We talked about deception or ghurur uh, from al mahajjatul Bayda. So now, inshallah, we'll talk about Ar-Raja. Uh, inshallah, if we have tawfiq, maybe in future we can talk about Al-Khawf because like Sabr and Shukr, Khawf and Raja are together in this book. Uh, and also, uh, for those who may not know Al-Mahajjatul Bayda, they should know that this is uh, the work of Mulla Muhsin Faiz Al-Kashani, Rizwanullah Ta'ala Alay, one of our great scholars, student and son-in-law of Mulla Sadra. So he found the book Ihya Ulum al-Din for Ghaza by Ghazali, very useful book. You know, Ihya Ulum al-Din is very well-known book in the whole Muslim world. And he found this very useful book, and he was not hesitant to, uh, you know, declare this. But he found that there are some issues that this uh, book needs to, you know, be improved and also to be summarized. So he removed some of the things which were not necessary and also added something useful or some things useful from the hadith of Ahlul Bayt salam or other things. But the basis and uh, great part of the book is Ihya Ulum al -Din. So it is called Al-Mahajjatul Bayda Fi Tahzeeb al -Ihya. Okay? So now we start from Kitab al Khawf wa Raja. Inshallah, you will receive PDF of the book for those who are able to read in uh, Arabic, it will be very useful. Uh, it is not translated into English, but maybe Ihya Ulum al-Din is available in English because some parts of Ihya Ulum al-Din are available in English, but not Mahajjatul Bayda. But inshallah, we will read the main uh, points from the text as well. Before we go into the text, we should know that Human beings, in order to 
move forward need to do two things yeah you need to protect yourself from harm and you need to bring to yourself benefit yeah so in arabic we say daf dharar wa jalbul manfa'ah yeah so you need to remove harm protect yourself from harm and you need to bring something which is useful to yourself every living being especially animals and more so human beings they have these qualities of protecting themselves and trying to gain what they need if they eat if they drink if they breathe if they run away from enemies if they make shelter it's all for these two things okay to bring benefit and to avoid harm in order to do so you should have a system inside that motivates you to do so so animals insects do it by instincts plants do it through their you know less conscious system through you know dna that they have through the codes which are built in them but in insects in animals there are instincts in human beings we have combination of instincts and also emotions and reason sometimes people maybe instinctively they don't like to do something but their intellect says they should do it or vice versa so in human beings there is a chance of resisting against their instincts for example maybe there is a mother that by instinct should love and care for the child but sometimes some mothers rarely but it's possible they act against their instincts for example they neglect these children yeah there are some mothers not many who abandon their children for some reasons so this shows that human beings can act against their instincts or they can act above their instincts for example if you see your child can better grow if your child leaves you for example wants to go to another country for a study yeah your instinct may say no no say no keep your child next to yourself but your agle would say you should overcome your instinct and let your child go so it can be lower than instinct it can be above instinct anyway human beings have the ability to choose what they should do they are not dictated by instincts although most of people just go by instinct but there's possibility so we need to have different levels of understanding so that we do what is useful and avoid what is harmful now when you have some kind of understanding that something is useful you need to have hope that this is possible to achieve if you know something is very useful even if you know that it is necessary but you have no hope will you go for it you will not go for it yeah or if there is something harmful but you don't have any fear someone has deceived you and said you know don't worry there is no, no no problem so you don't run away from what is harmful so we need to be equipped with also hope for achieving what is beneficial and fear from 
what is harmful. So just having benefits and harms outside is not enough. Even understanding them is not enough. We need to have a kind of response in our heart as well towards them in the form of hope and fear. Without hope, you don't move. Without fear, you don't protect yourself. You need to move forward and also protect yourself. So this is why hope and fear, raja and khauf, are very necessary, they are crucial, okay? But the reason I decided to start with hope is that because first of all, Alhamdulillah, we are dealing with believers, with people who are already careful, people who are fearing God. So these are not the people that you know, are careless and we need to frighten them. But also because we live in a time that unfortunately there are many sad things happening, many problems happening. And therefore, people need hope. People need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing them. Allah is near them. Allah is caring for them, loving them. And no matter what we have done, still there is always hope for us to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam says, Inna ilayka qareebul masafa. The one who is moving towards you, the wayfarer towards you, has a short distance. Our distance towards Allah is long, as long as we have not done anything. But if you embark on the journey, it will become short because Allah is there to help you. Allah is there to take your hand. Like for example, Someone says, in another country, for example, your teacher, for example, you know, says, you know, uh, if you come to this country, we can meet. You say, oh, this long distance. But then he says, you don't need to come all the way to find to the city where I am. You just fly and I will come all the way and meet you at the airport. It takes you one, two hours. It may take me more, but we will meet. Hadith Qudsi says that Allah says, if someone comes towards me, just distance of these two fingers, man taqaddama ilayya shibran. Shibran is distance between the two fingers here. I will go towards him like one meter. Whoever walks towards me, I will run towards him. Okay, so this is why Imam Zain al Abdin says distance is near, is short. So, inshallah, in these seven sessions, we will talk about hope and how we can grow it and at the same time to distinguish it from deception. Because some people have, you know, uh, a kind of ignorant hope, a kind of uneducated hope. They do nothing and they say we have hope. Like a farmer that has not planted anything, has not looked after the land, and just says, I have hope that I will have great harvest. It's not going to work. So, inshallah, we'll discuss all these things. Before I start with al mahajjatul Bayda, I would like to read for you a hadith. It is very interesting. And uh, you may have already heard this hadith. This is from Tafsir of Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Ummi. You may have heard Tafsir Ali ibn Ibrahim. This is a hadith-based Tafsir. Ali ibn Ibrahim was teacher of the Shaykh of Shaykh Kulaini. The one who compiled Al Kafi. Okay? So he's a very uh, respected scholar and muhaddith, teacher of Shaykh Kulaini. And the chain of narration is also reliable. It's Sahih. This hadith is authentic. 
عن الصادق عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صدق عن الإمام الصادق عليه السلام عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن آخر عبد يؤمر به إلى النار The last servant, last person that is asked to be sent to hell. Okay, so all people who were not possible to be forgiven are already sentenced to go to hell. All who were able to be forgiven are forgiven. This person is the last one to be sent to hell. فَإِذَا أُمِرَ بِهِ إِلْتَفَتَ When it is said that this person should be taken to hell, he will turn back. Okay? Instead of facing hell, turns back. فَيَقُولُ الْجَبَّارُ رُدُّوهُ Allah says, bring him back. فَيَرُدُّونَهُ the angels will bring him back. Then Allah asked him, Lemal tafatta. Why you turn back? You know, imagine there is a judge who says that this person is guilty, take him to prison. Okay? But the criminal looks back at the judge. So if the judge is kind, says, you know, did you want to say something? Is there anything you remember that can help you? Yeah? Wouldn't say, you know, take him anyway. No? Says, give him a chance. So Allah says, لِمَلْ تَفَتَّ فَيَقُولْ يَا رَبِّي لَمْ يَكُنْ ظَنِّي بِكَ هَذَا He says, my Lord, this was not the way I expected you to treat me. You know, in Dua Kumel, we say, Maha Kaza Zanno Bek. Yeah? Maha Kaza Zanno. We say to Allah, we don't have this opinion about you that you are going to punish us. Fayakul, Vama Kana Zanno Kabi. Then Allah says, What was your opinion about me? What did you think about me in dunya? Okay? Fayakul, Ya Rabbi. كَانَ ظَنِّي بِكْ أَنْ تَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيعَتِي وَتُسْكِنَنِي جَنَّتَكْ As I said, this is authentic hadith in tafsir of Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Ummi. He says, my hope was, my opinion about you was that you will forgive my sins and would put me in heaven. فَيَغُولُ الْجَبَّارَ يَا مَلَائِكَتِي لَا وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي وَآلَائِي وَعُلُوِّي وَارْتِفَاعِ مَكَانِي مَا ظَنَّ بِي عَبْدِي سَاعَةٌ مِنْ خَيْرٍ قَطُّ وَلَوْ ظَنَّ بِي سَاعَةٌ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مَا رَوَّعْتَهُ بِالنَّارِ Allah says to the angels, by referring to his glory, his dignity, his high position, Allah says, this servant of mine has never had such good opinion about me. Okay? He never had such good opinion about me. If he had good opinion about me, I would not even have frightened him. By threatening to go to hell. Okay? لَوْ ذَنَّ بِي سَاعَةً مِنْ خَيْرٍ Even if for a portion of time he had good opinion about me, مَا رَوَعْتُهُ بِالنَّارِ I would not have frightened him by going to hell. So he is not very honest. أَجِيزُ لَهُ كِزْبَهِ but accept his lie. I will explain what does it mean. Accept his lie. فَأَدْخُلُوهُ الْجَنَّةِ Let him go to heaven. 
So, what does it mean? Inshallah, in future, we will talk about having good opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husnu dhanna billah. It is very important. If you have good opinion about Allah, if you say Allah is going to help me, Allah is going to forgive me, Allah is going to help me with you know upbringing my children, I don't know with my marriage, with my you know community, with everything. If you have good opinion, it really helps. It, it really can change. So, a person who in dunya was not very honest. You know, many of us in our du'as, in our claims, are not very honest. For example, how many of you can honestly re read du'a'i kumay and mean it? Yeah, to say that, for example, even if you put me in hell, la a'lan tu ahlaha inni uhabbuk. I would declare inside hell that I love you. How many of us are going to do that? Even if you have a little headache, we say, you know, oh Allah, you know, I have problem with you. You have not been fair with me. Yeah? If we have you know, big problems, then we think Allah has abandoned us. So, we say we love you, we say we have good opinion about you, okay? But it's not really coming from, you know, bottom of our heart. But even this helps. Even this much of, you know, showing appreciation and love to Allah helps. So when Allah says, Ajizu kezba, accept his lie, means that this servant of mine in dunya used to say, I have good opinion. It was not very honest, but accept that. Because he is sari or reza. Yeah, yeah sari or reza. He is very easy to please. He is not very difficult to please. He just looks for an excuse to come and help. He would not force himself into our lives, but he's waiting for you to send him an invitation. Even if by mistake you send invitation, he accepts. They say there was a person who was an idol worshiper. And you know, in Arabic, idol is called Sanam. As they call it, Vasan, Awthan, also they call Asnam. So he wanted to say, Ya Sanam my idol, by mistake he said, Ya Samad. And then Allah said, Labbaik, here I am. Why? Because Allah wants an excuse to come to us. Like, you know, as a mother, when your child, for example, runs away from you and is angry, you know, and you know that if you go after, the child will not come back. But you are very much, you know, desiring that the child comes back. If by mistake calls you, you go after the child. So, you know, you called me. Yeah, I didn't come myself. You called me. So, Allah is looking for an excuse to come to our life and to help us. So, this hadith was just a sample of many beautiful things, sayings and teachings that we have which highlights great mercy and kindness of Allah and how much we should have hope in him. Now let us go to Al-Mahajjatul Bayda and see what Ghazali, Ghazali and Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani have to offer. So, because this is very, you know, huge book, it comes in, you know, Mahajja comes in eight volumes. So, it has different sections. This is Kitabul Khawf Var Raja, the book of fear and hope. This by itself is a book, but inside the master book. And Ghazali has very beautiful, sorry, very beautiful khutbah, you know, sermon. Ulama start their writings with sermon, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And normally in these khut uh, sermons, they also refer to the topic of the book. For example, here Ghazali says, and Mullah Mohsen has mentioned the same thing. Alhamdulillah al lutfuhu wa thawabu. All praise is due to Allah, whose favor and reward are hoped. 
we have hope in his favor and reward. But But we are afraid of his plans if Allah plans against us. Of course, he would not make plan against any person without reason. But if someone makes plots and then Allah has counter plans, then it will be frightening. And his punishment will be, you know, feared from. Alladhi ammara quluba awliyaihi biruhi rajaihi. Very beautiful sentence. Allah is the one who revives and restores the hearts of his awliya, his friends, with hope. Hope revives the heart. A heart without hope dies. Never take away hope from people. Never you know, make them too much afraid of something. And never your heart or let your heart become empty of hope. Always be hopeful. Inshallah, we'll talk about you know, this concept that we have in Hadith that when you have least of the hope, be more hopeful. Because that's the time that Allah may intervene. Okay? When you have no hope, there is no one to help you, no organization, whatever, and your hope is only in Allah, that's the time that you can be most hopeful. Allah, with His... Uh, gentle and subtle bounties leads his awliya towards his own door, his own gate, and turns them away from dunya, dar balahi. You know, if you want to be remaining in dunya, you have difficulty in understanding how Allah who is so kind lets people suffer. Yeah, if dunya is the only thing that matters for you, you cannot understand some of the things that Allah does. Why, you know, we should suffer in this dunya? Why awliya Allah suffered in dunya? Why Ahlul Bayt, why, you know, Prophet suffered? Yeah, why innocent people suffer? If you only think that dunya matters. But if you have a wider vision and you know that dunya is the least important thing, and you know that our greatest happiness comes later. And for achieving that great happiness, we need to be detached from dunya. Then anything that detaches us from dunya is to be welcomed. It can be your abada, it can be your reflections, it can be suffering. Actually, the most powerful means for detachment from dunya is what? Suffering. Who are the people who are least attached to dunya? Ahlul Bayt, because they su suffer in this dunya and see the suffering of people of this dunya. So, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has led with his subtle blessings, his awliya towards his own gate and has turned them away from dar balahi. This dunya is the abode of calamities and suffering. Awliyaullah's hearts are taken away from dunya. They are not attached to dunya. And then he says dunya, you know, one of the problems of dunya is what? He says, Alati ya mustaqarru a'da'ahi. Dunya is the place that enemies of Allah are also there. Dunya is where lots of crimes take place. Dunya is the place that you see more than two million people are put in very difficult situation without water, without food, without medicine, and still bombarded. This is dunya. Is this world, you know, something you know that we should be attached to and say, you know, I want to be here forever? I don't want to depart from this world. No. We gain from dunya, 
We try to improve dunya, but our heart is not in dunya. Our heart is for something else. So a place in which Hitler and Saddam and Yazid and their likes exist is not an ideal place. Yes, it's ideal for training purposes, not for staying here forever. So he says, this is mustaqarru a'da'ihi. It's the place that a'da'ullah exists and stay. And then the same thing that Allah does with hope is done also through khawf, through fear. So these are two ways that Allah works for pushing us towards heaven and protecting us from going to hell, he uses hope to push us towards heaven and fear to keep us away from going to hell. Then he sends salawat and salutations to the prophet and his household and companions. And then he says, Amma ba'd. After uh, this sermon after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and salutations, now we enter the topic. These are two wings. Every bird has two wings. Yeah, you cannot fly with one wing, you need two wings. We cannot fly with hope only or with fear only. Here, the birds are muqarrabun. Those who are very close to Allah, like birds, they want to fly. They need two wings, wing of hope and wing of fear. They will fly Every praised position that you can rise to needs two wings, khawf and raja. There are two, like two vehicles that you need to use to reach your destination. And he says, Every akabatan kaud, every turning point, every difficult, you know, path, you can, you know, cross with hope and fear. فلا يقود إلى غرب الرحمن وروح الجنان مع كونه بعيد الأرجاء ثقيل الأعباء محفوفا بمكاره القلوب ومشاق الجواره والأعضاء إلا أزمة الرجاء Without hope you cannot reach Allah سبحانه وتعالى Without hope you cannot reach heaven Without hope you cannot cope with the challenges of this journey because you know the path towards heaven at the beginning is very difficult. Yeah. In a school, if you want to fail, it's very easy and enjoyable. Yeah. You don't do any homework, you don't go to the class, you go and play, it's very enjoyable, but then you will fail. If you want to succeed, it's not very easy. You have to reduce your sleep. You have to reduce your playing. You have to reduce sometimes, you know, meeting friends, etc. But it has very good end. So he says, if you want to overcome these difficulties and challenges of uh, dunya, you need ha to have hope. And on the other hand, if you want to be protected from going wrong direction and ending up with being in hell, you need fear. So we need to study a few things. One, what is the reality of hope and what is the reality of fear? We want to have a scholarly understanding, yeah, not superficial understanding. This book is one of the most advanced books on Islamic ethics. So 
We want to have a scholarly understanding. What is the reality of hope and fear? What are the merits of fear and hope? Of course, we will discuss in these seven lectures, inshallah, hope. But because this section is for hope and fear, he mentions both. But then he studies hope. Afterwards, he studies fear. So this is the introduction to both parts of the section. How we can have both hope and fear, although they may look contradictory. Yeah, you may think either I should have hope or I should have fear. Because we cannot have both. But we say no. You need to have both and they don't contradict each other. They belong to different things. We combine discussion about these two in one section, in one book, which has two parts. Mushtamilan ala shatrain. Shatr in Arabic means part. Shart means condition, but shatr means part. So it has two parts. Shatrul awwal firraja. The first part is about hope. وَشَطْرُ الثَّانِي فِي الْخَوْفِ The second part is about fear. أَمَّا الشَطْرُ الْأَوَّلِ The first part includes بَيَانِ حَقِيقَةِ الرَّجَى The reality of hope. بَيَانِ فَضِيلَةِ الرَّجَى The merits of having hope. بَيَانُ الدَّوَاءِ الرَّجَى If I don't have hope, if I am despaired, if I am hopeless, what is the remedy for that? What's the solution? What's the medicine? Yeah, we need treatment. Sometimes people have no hope. People have lost, you know, hope. We need to give them hope. What's the method for gaining hope? So these are the things that will be discussed in this part of uh, the book. So the first thing now is bayan haqiqat raja the reality of hope. What is the reality of hope? I stop here and I want to have some time if you have you know com com comments or questions. Inshallah next session we will start with this part page 249 of volume 7. As I said inshallah you will be given the PDF. Uh, you have yeah, uh, Sister Zamina Shala will share with you, and you can read the book in advance and you know be prepared. Also, if you can discuss and have mubahatha, would be very helpful. If you can, you know, between this week and next week, inshallah, have mubahatha. So, uh, I stop here. If you have any questions, you know, we can put forward. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. About yes. The, the initial book was that by um, Ghazali. Ghazali. Yes. Okay. And it's called Ahya al Urdi. Ahya al Urdi. Yes. Question. Um, I don't know how to write this, but is the lack of hope? You don't have to be hopeless, but does that sometimes mean you just leave things to Allah? Like, oh, maybe this is fate. Maybe it's just not meant to be. Does that mean you have lack of hope, or have you just got fear from it as in like? You know, if you have no hope, it means that you think things are terrible and cannot improve. This is different from yaqeen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you lose hope in yourself, maybe, or in other people, or, I don't know, in your uh, group or whatever. But you should never lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, the balance is important. We should always remain hopeful, even in most difficult circumstances. When you don't see any way out, still you have to be very hopeful. And you need to do your part, even if it's little. Just doing your little 
you know, part is very important so that Allah will help. Maybe this is just a drop of water. You need a sea. But do this little part and then have hope in Allah that he would do the rest. May Allah bless inshallah. Yes. Um, Alaikum um, salam. Um, how does hope um, like balance with the idea of justice? Because, like for example, now all these scenes we're seeing in Gaza, obviously, to us it looks like there's no justice. It's yeah. not fair. So obviously we all have hope in Allah, but then what about justice? Are we meant to just wait for the day of judgment to know that Allah will punish the wrongdoers, or like how do we? you know, teach ourselves to understand this. Yeah. So everyone certainly and every nation, every group will, you know, receive justice. No one can run away from their crimes. Okay. But the full justice cannot be administered in dunya. Because this dunya doesn't have capacity to give full justice. For example, if someone has killed many people, how many times do you want to kill him? Mm. You cannot kill him you know, many times. Yeah? Or if someone has sacrificed his life or her life, how you want to reward him in dunya? Or sacrifice his family, his children? You know, how can you reward him in dunya? This dunya is too little. Justice starts in dunya, certainly. Yeah? But it cannot be accomplished in dunya. It should be accomplished in the hereafter. But everyone who does something good or bad, even in dunya, they will start seeing the result of it. Sometimes the people that, you know, do big crimes, we think they are just enjoying and we think they, in akhirah they will be punished. But we don't know how much they suffer in dunya. You know? And in what condition they live. You know, what can be, you know, greater punishment for a person who loses his humanity. If a human being becomes like an animal, a wild you know, animal, do you expect any punishment more than this? You know, if, if you say someone, we, ter we take away from you your humanity. It's the worst punishment, I think. Yeah. But full justice will be uh, administered in the hereafter. I love this. Yes. Um, well, then I have a question. I yes. think it's a bit similar to the first one. Yeah. Um, sometimes there are things, you know, that happen and um, like you always have hope. You say, inshallah, it will work out and you keep the hope like really high and we work for, for things. It's not like we just wait. So we work for them and they keep just, you know, shutting and they won't happen. And then with time and, and throughout years, I think this is um, when hope starts to, you know, fade away, little by little, and then <coughs> uh, maybe we start wondering, maybe this is what Allah wants, maybe he doesn't want me to be, I don't know, to to, to find this, um, I want to say, it's, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always light, but maybe sometimes we start thinking, maybe this light at the end of the tunnel, I'm not supposed to reach it, because maybe this is the state that Allah wants me in because maybe it's the one that makes me, you know, cl closer to him. I, I, I'm so, but uh, I just want to know, like, there's this fine line between, yes, we are putting the work, we are doing what we're supposed to do, and then things are not working out, and giving up, and then there's tawakkul, and there's so many things that just, you know, are um, um, mixing, like, in the mix, and yeah. uh, we start wondering, maybe... I just want to know when, what is this, you know, there's this fine line between tawakkul and then, um, and sometimes resorting to maybe trying to knock on people's doors, but then they, like it also said, says that we shouldn't knock on people's doors because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one we should knock on the, the door and, or is Allah, does Allah send people so it's fine to knock their doors? I'm, I'm asking so many questions right now because I have so, so many things going yeah. in my mind, so. Um, but yeah, this is when hope starts going away and then maybe we start believing that we're not supposed to reach that. Yeah. 
inshallah we will gradually discuss these things and uh, inshallah whenever also you have questions you, know, you can ask but briefly first of all we should make sure that what we have hope for is a positive thing okay so sometimes you know we are thinking about something you know worldly or selfish uh, and you know we think that for example this must happen why it doesn't happen we become disappointed etc but anything which is positive anything which is you know useful anything which is pleasing to allah and benefiting us you can always have hope you can always have hope you can always do your part and when you really reach the end of the line and you think that you cannot do anything more then it actually becomes easier because then the only agent the only doer would be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah so as long as i have to do something i'm always worried am i delivering my part my job or not but if for example suppose i have an illness or someone in my family has an illness that there is no treatment for that if there was treatment we were going for that we were trying that yeah but suppose there is no treatment for that only allah can give shafa so this in a sense becomes easier because we have done everything possible and we have only hope in him and we should never lose our hope even up to the last moment of your life you should not lose your hope because if he finds this is your maslaha and fits into the general wisdom that he has for this world he would give it and if he wouldn't give you in dunya he would give you something better in the hereafter so imagine if your mother who whom you know well and you know who, that you know that definitely loves you and whatever she has you know will offer if she was responsible for the world would you worry so you know alhamdulillah my mother is responsible for the world <laughs> yeah so allah is much more merciful than our mothers but the thing is that allah has also wisdom mothers not have you know complete wisdom all the time <laughs> uh, to be respectful you know but we know that we, we never have you know complete wisdom sometimes mothers get emotional sometimes you know they give in sometimes the children you know ask for something mother knows that it's not good for them but you know they cry and mother you know gives them but allah is wise is more merciful than the kindest mothers but at the same time would never be pleased with something which is harmful to us yeah so we should have trust in him we should have peace of mind about his decisions and never lose our hope and in the most difficult time when no one can help that's where you can be more hopeful inshallah we'll talk more about it it's a very good question and if later you have a still you know some uh, problems you know please let me know any question Okay, so inshallah with salawat we can finish. Allah, 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 Allah